Little Legends, Exceptional Men in Black History, Vashti Harrison, Part 1, Pages 2 through 6. Benjamin Banneker, 1731 through 1806, Inventor, Farmer. Although Benjamin attended school for only a few years before working on his father's farm, he loved to read and study. He became so good at math that people came from all around Maryland to test him with questions. They were amazed at how quickly he answered them. He would ask math questions too, writing them as poems. Benjamin wanted to use his abilities to help people. At 15, he created an irrigation system that kept water flowing to farms' crops. It was so effective that even during droughts, the Banneker farm flourished. In 1753, he became fascinated with a friend's watch. Watches were rare at that time, and his friend let him borrow it. Benjamin studied the watch and eventually built his own full-size clock, the first built in America. News of Benjamin's clock spread throughout Maryland. He was approached by George Ellicott, a landowner and amateur astronomer. The two became friends, and George lent Benjamin some of his astronomy equipment and books. Benjamin became obsessed with the stars, lying down outside all night to observe the skies, then going to sleep after dawn. When people saw him in bed during the day, they thought he was lazy. As it, his knowledge grew, Benjamin even spotted errors in George's books. Around 1791, Benjamin wrote an ephemeris, a chart of the movements of stars and planets. George's cousin, Andrew, read it and asked Benjamin to be his assistant for a very special project, surveying and designing land that will become Washington, D.C., the young nation's new capital. Benjamin agreed and they set to work. When his project with Andrew was over, Benjamin returned home and worked on an almanac, a book about upcoming natural events. He used his writing to speak out about the injustice of slavery and defend the humanity and intelligence of black people. Benjamin was an exceptional scientist and inventor who through quiet observation and diligent work helped shape American history. James Armistead Lafayette, circa 1748 through 1830. Revolutionary War Spy. Not much is known about James's life before the Revolutionary War. He was born enslaved in Virginia, and his owner, who managed military supplies, taught James to read and write so he could be a better worker. During the war against the British, James heard that any slave who fought for the Americans' Continental Army would be freed if the Americans won the war. He got his owner's permission to enlist and in 1781 was assigned to serve under Marcus de Lafayette, a young French aristocrat fighting for the American cause. At first, James used his knowledge of the Virginian landscape to transport messages. But then James and Lafayette had a better idea. James could spy on the British. Posing as a runaway slave, James went to the British camp commanded by Lord Charles Cornwallis. James helped lead troops through the unfamiliar land. No one suspected that he could read and write, 
So generals and other soldiers talked about their tactics in front of him and he was given access to British maps and plans. Secretly, he memorized details and reported back to Lafayette. James became so entrusted by the British that he was asked to spy on the Americans. He agreed, but gave the British only false information. Equipped with James's accurate information about British troop size, strategies, and morale, the Continental Army defeated the British at Yorktown, effectively ending the war. Imagine Cornwallis' surprise when he entered Lafayette's headquarters to surrender and saw James there. After the war, enslaved people who served as soldiers were freed, but James had not technically been a soldier and he was not freed. He petitioned for his release, but was ignored. It wasn't until Lafayette wrote a letter commending James's service that his petition was granted and he was freed in 1787. James took the name Lafayette to honor his commander and friend. He lived the rest of his life as a farmer and family man, secretly one of America's greatest heroes. Frederick Douglass, 1818 through 1895, orator, abolitionist. Born enslaved on a plantation in Maryland, Frederick was separated from his mother as an infant. He understood that he was seen and treated as property. When he was eight years old, he was sent to work for Hugh Oud, whose wife taught Frederick how to read. It was illegal for a black person to read and write, a tactic used to keep the enslaved from advancing. When Hugh found out, he put a stop to their lessons, but Frederick had learned enough to be able to teach himself. One of the first books he owned was a collection of historical speeches. So as he learned to read, he was also learning how to give speeches and form an argument something he would become famous for. As a devout Christian, Frederick didn't understand how slave owners could co-opt the gospel to reinforce ideas of slavery. He tried to escape many times and even tried to forge travel papers. He was found out, labeled a troublemaker, and tortured for it. In 1838, he finally made his escape north. While free, he fought to abolish slavery. In 1841, he spoke at an anti-slavery convention. People were riveted by his eloquence. Northerners didn't understand the experience of the enslaved, so Frederick published his autobiography, Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass, an American Slave. It became a bestseller. Some didn't believe he wrote it or experienced it, so he wrote a second one, this time naming his slave owners. It was a risky move, and he had to go to the United Kingdom to avoid recapture. There he gave speeches, and two of his supporters negotiated to purchase his freedom back in the United States. He published several anti-slavery newspapers including the North Star. He took his words of abolition to President Lincoln, advocating for the rights of black Union soldiers in the Civil War. He also supported women's suffrage. Frederick's lifelong efforts led to the ratification of the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments to the Constitution. And he is remembered as one of the most important people in world history. Thank you for listening, friends. This was Little Legends, Exceptional Men in Black History by Vashti Harrison, Part 1. Stay tuned for Part 2.